Good morning. Welcome to our worship here at Ridgecrest United Methodist Church in the high desert of California. I'm the Reverend Wesley Elmore, the pastor here, and I'm joined by our musical team of Patrick on piano. We have Ted on guitar, Rob and Heidi on flute, and Courtney on clarinet, and Ethan is our uh, singer this morning. We have Elliot and Amy providing the tech for us. I'm grateful that you're joining us either live for this live stream or watching later on today or this week. If you are watching live, um, you can send in any prayer requests that you want addressed and type them into the Facebook comments and do that as well. And hopefully if you're on our email list, you can follow along on the order of worship. Um, if not, you can also follow along on the TV screen that's uh, presented throughout this service. So. Join me in prayer as we begin our time together. Let us pray. O holy God, you beckon and you call forth every one of us in some type of way, some type of invitation that wants us to join in with you and with the other people of God in this world that is the church. And so, in our own way, this morning and this time we do so, but we also hopefully do so in the larger sense, the sense of what it means to be with you always. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning is The Summons.
And if it isn't uh, obvious to you already, we're in a sermon series entitled Come and See uh, for six weeks here in Epiphany. And the foundational scripture for this Come and See series is actually the scripture passages that we have for today, which is from the Gospel of John in the first chapter, picking up at verse 35 and going through verse 46. The next day, John again was standing with two of his disciples, and as he watched Jesus walk by, he exclaimed, Look, here is the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them following, he said to them, What are you looking for? They said, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, Come and see. They came and saw where he was staying, and they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated anointed. He brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now, Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him about whom Moses and the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This encounter, which we have recorded for us in the Gospel of John, in some ways is what it is all about. An introduction to Jesus, followed by an invitation. What do you do with an introduction? What do you do with an invitation? Do you accept it? Do you engage with it? Do you smile politely? and move on. Have you ever had family or friends visit you from out of town? And while they are with you, do you then take perhaps some time off or vacation, and you go around and you see various sites and places that maybe they've never been to? Maybe it's the first time they've been to this location. You want to show them the wonders and the unique aspects of where you live. You might even say, you really got to see this. Or, if they have limited time, you're calculating, well, which places can we go see? If you only have two days, what are the most important places that I want to take these family or friends to see? And so, you have to eliminate some and prioritize others. But you're saying to them, come and see. But maybe the family and friends are coming to visit because of you or because of a family member. I mean, grandparents who come to visit you, they may be interested in the sites around town, but you know what? Grandparents are more interested in the grandchild especially if it's a brand new grandbaby. So there is a difference between coming and seeing, seeing places versus persons. I like to watch basketball, in particular college basketball, and, you know, I, I follow it, and because I went to seminary at a basketball school, Duke University, I am grateful that they are good in the program and they do well. While I was there, of course, 
I didn't get to see any home games because all the home games are sold out and only the undergrad students, not the graduate students, get to, to stand in line to go in to, to watch the games. But because Duke made it to the NCAA tournament in one year, the first round of games was held a, about an hour away in Greensboro, North Carolina, and I was able to get tickets, actually close tickets, to be about 30 feet to 30 yards away from the court. And besides the fact that I was grateful to see the games in person, one of the things that stood out for me really, really much was when I would watch on TV, sometimes I would go, oh man, how could they miss that? Or I could have done that, or that should have been easy. But in person, I did not realize how fast the game is, how big the players are, how much they can speed down the court, and things happen so fast in a blink of an eye. And I realized actually being there and seeing it take place, no way, I can't do this. I don't have the skill, talent in a million years and the ability to do what they can do. It's a whole different game. And I never would have known that unless I had gone to see in person. In all the Gospels, it's a common theme. Once Jesus begins his ministry, he calls his disciples. Now, the main image that we have of Jesus calling disciples is Jesus calling the fishermen. You know, Peter, Andrew, follow me. But in John's Gospel, we have Jesus calling as well and follow me, but there's also the come and see. Come and check it out. Come see what it's really like. The day after Jesus calls Andrew, Jesus decides to go to Galilee and he finds Philip and he says, follow me. But then something different happens with this call of the initial disciples. Philip calls Nathanael. And so only in John's gospel do we have one of the disciples, and we think of the 12 disciples, calling another disciple. In the other gospels, it's Jesus who calls them. So sometimes we come to Jesus because we have a direct encounter with the divine, but more likely we will come to Jesus because someone else invites us. Come to church, come to youth group, come to Bible study, come on this mission trip with me, come help me fix these meals on Friday night that we serve for the hungry out of our social hall. When I was a young and new officer in the army, I got invited to some home Bible studies. And at those Bible studies, I got to know Jesus better, but I also got to know better the kindness and goodness and godly examples of these other disciples, the ones who invited me and the others who were part of the Bible study. They were modern-day disciples for me. They invited me to come and see, come and check out this Bible study. And that was part of the invitation, but the other part, of course, is, is that it is about developing an understanding in a relationship, not only with other people, but also with our Lord Jesus Christ. There's also another subtle twist in this particular story, this story of invitation in the first chapter of John's Gospel. Did you catch the difference between the inquiries that are going on? When the two disciples... Andrew, and then the unnamed one. Some think it's possibly John, the beloved disciple. They ask Jesus, where are you staying? Jesus replies, come and see. So they did. They came and they saw where he was staying and were told they remained him with that day. And even the implication is that they may have stayed with him even for the night because the story transitions to the next day. 
Now, there is a word that is behind all of this. It is the word abide. It is the word in verse 39 that is behind this seeking to find out, this asking, where are you staying? Where are you abiding at? What is the location you are at? Abide is a, is a key word in the Gospel of John. And if you were to turn to chapter 15, you're going to find that word used repeatedly as Jesus talks about himself and his disciples, us, all people who come unto him. But the next day, when Jesus decides to go to Galilee and he encounters Philip and invites him to come, and Philip goes and finds Nathanael and tell him, tells him he's met the Messiah, Nathanael was a bit wary and he makes this snarky comment about Jesus' hometown of Nazareth as in, ha, nothing good can come out of Nazareth. But Philip does what? Philip invites him to come and see. Philip invites him not to come and see Nazareth. Philip invites him to come and see Jesus. Philip invites him to come and see the person, the one who is the Messiah. The first invitation is focused on the place of lodging. Where are you abiding, Jesus? Where are you staying? But the second invitation is focused on the shift. In John 15, 4, Jesus says, Abide in me as I abide in you. And while we think of abide as location primarily, a place, a spot, but really with Jesus, he wants us to know that at the heart of abiding, it's personal, as in person. Abide in me, much more important than abiding in a spot or a town or a country. Come and see, be a tourist and check out this location, but more important than that, it's come and see to be with a person. And so the invitation to come and see may be a church, a church located at a certain address, at a certain street, in a certain town. And as wonderful as that is, the most important part of the invitation is the transition from coming to a church building to coming to a church that is a people, the body of Christ, as we're told elsewhere in Scripture. The people who are Christ witnesses, Christ's disciples who are joined together, Christ as the head of the church, and you are the body that is linked to the head. You are Christ. So that when you meet the body, you meet Christ. And so the invitation is come and see, but it's come and meet Jesus. Meet the one who is a living person who may travel from place to place and go hither and yon and we tag along, but we're not tagging along primarily to see the sights in Galilee or Bethsaida or Jerusalem or Cana or wherever else our feet take us on our travels around the world. We're coming to see because we're coming to check out Jesus. And if we stay, if we remain in following Jesus, then we do so not because of the scenic views, but because of the change in our life and the wonderful relationship that we have with Christ. This is what it means to come and see. Let us pray. Oh God, we are here and you know us and you invite us and our choice is whether we will come 
and whether we will stay with you. But we always know that you stay with us. Amen. I invite you to join me in this time of prayer that uh, across our connection that we can do something that um, is in existence for centuries, even before our modern time of technology that enables us to not be in person but still communicate and still be in touch with one another. And uh, of course, prayer is that as well. So uh, we want to lift up... Uh, Wayne Zelmer, um, who was in the, the San Francisco Bay Area where he lives now, um, who was back in the hospital with uh, pneumonia. And so, uh, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers for Wayne. We also want to lift up those that um, are traveling this week, those that continue to um, 
fight COVID infections and those that are the leaders of our country and around the world. And we pray for peace, particularly in the, the area of uh, Ukraine and Belarus and Russia. And so for all of these, we come to God in prayer. Please join me in this time. O oh Lord, we pray for the church and for the world. We pray that all might come to know you, and because of knowing you, are united together, united primarily through your name, but also through love. Be with the peoples of this land and of all nations, that the ways of peace would prevail. Be with those that are in service and care for others, those that are in those professions and jobs and positions that bring them directly in contact with those who are the sick and the weak, those that are in need of help, whether immediate or long-term. Lift them up and give them strength as they do their acts of mercy and be with all of us in whatever our condition and state is, those who are sick that they might be healed, those that are in service as well. We pray also for all those who day after day go about the simple task of life, family and work and school and travel, hobbies, enjoyments, communicating with one another in person or through technology, and that in all these, your presence, your comfort, and your peace may be known. All of this we give unto you as our prayer, as we unite in prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. In our uh, giving at this time of year, we have a, uh, a special focus. Throughout the year, we regularly support the local um, food pantry that's at the Salvation Army in our community. It's a community-wide effort that's supported by different churches and agencies. But with the Super Bowl, we support Super Bowl Sunday, and so we are collecting food items uh, up into through next Sunday that we will take there. And... Um, we have a, a fun little contest that we'll do next Sunday um, in which we will uh, designate the food from those who give for one of the Super Bowl teams. So I don't know if you can see, this is a donation that was brought in this last week, and we have these slips of paper, and we put on them which of the, the team that the person is supporting and that they're hoping wins, and we divide those up, and we weigh them, and we find out which team wins based on poundage. Um, and we also collect monetary donations that way. So if you want to give in that way, um, and especially those of you that are watching online and you're perhaps not able to come in, in person and drop food items off, you can send in um, checks 
or contribute online uh, with the special offering designation, and that will go to uh, the Super Bowl that will help the local food pantry in our town. And so thank you for that. Let us close our time together with our uh, closing hymn.
Enjoy your day and week and be blessed in whatever you do. May God, who is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen. Silence.